What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the weekly Kenai Peninsula Fishing Report. The date is July 5th, 2021. Happy 4th of July. Happy July. And uh, just some really positive numbers. And I had some good luck fishing this past week. So let's get right into it. In this video, I will be talking about emergency orders, press releases, and of course, we'll go over the fish counts and I'll give you some on the ground field reporting. I live here on the Kenai Peninsula and I spend most of my days fishing. So if I, I'll tell you exactly what I'm seeing out there. So let's start here with some press releases and emergency orders and all good news so far. All good news. Um, holding over from last week, you still can't keep any king salmon from the Kenai River, but we'll take a look at some fish counts and they're actually looking positive. But positive emergency orders for the Kasilof, the Kasilof River sockeye salmon limits increased in an effort to allow anglers an additional harvest opportunity of Kasilof River sockeye salmon. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game is increasing the bag and possession limit for sockeye salmon to six fish per day and 12 fish in, in possession. However, no more than two salmon per day and two in possession may be coho salmon. So you can keep six sockeye salmon. Um, and of that six, two of which can be coho. So four sockeye, two coho, or just six sockeye. That's awesome news. Uh, the biological escapement goal on the Kasilov River is 140,000 to 320,000. A total of 113,000 sockeye salmon have already come through the Kasilov River sonar site. That was on July 1st. Uh, so the current escapement of sockeye salmon into the Kasilov River is proceeding at a rate that is projected to exceed the biological escapement goal. Increasing the limits for sockeye salmon allows anglers an opportunity to harvest additional fish to fill their freezer. Area management biologist Colton Lipka. So heck yeah, guys. Get on down to the Kasilov and go get some sockeye because they're coming. They're running. Another one here. Russian River and Upper Kenai River sockeye salmon limits increased. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game is implementing the following sport fishing regulation. Liberalization. By increasing the limits of sockeye salmon to six per day and twelve in possession for the Russian River and a section of the main stem or a section of the main stem, stem Upper Kenai River, this regulatory change is effective 12:01 a.m. Thursday, July 1st. So, if you guys are fishing the Russian River and that main stem of the Upper Kenai, you can keep six sockeye there as well. The section of the main stem Upper Kenai River with Increased sockeye salmon limits includes the area that extends from the Skelac Lake upstream to Alaska Fishing Game regulatory markers located approximately 300 yards upstream of the public boat launch at Sportsman's Landing. So, okay, good. Let's take a look at that. As of Monday, June 28th, a total of 26,000 sockeye salmon. Uh, our escapement goal is 22,000 to 42,000. So, Heck yeah, guys. It's a good run for sockeye. I know we were looking at those numbers. We're getting a little nervous there with a the slow start, but just massive increases of fish. Uh, take a look at this. The Kasilov River dip netting area expanded in an effort to allow dip netters more opportunity to harvest their household limits of sockeye salmon on the Kasilov River. The Alaska Department of Fishing Game is expanding the Kasilov River personal use dip netting area. Personal use dip netting from the shore will be allowed in an expanded area from Alaska Fishing Game markers on Cook Inlet beaches upstream to the Sterling Highway Bridge on the Kasilov River. Dip netting from a boat is allowed from markers located on Cook Inlet beaches upstream to markers at approximately River Mile 3 of the Kasilov River. This went into effect July 3rd. Wow. An upper Cook Inlet personal use permit and a 2021 resident sport fishing license are required to participate. So, guys, you got to be residents of Alaska to do this. Dip netting on the Kasilov River is allowed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Only Alaska residents can participate. King salmon or non-salmon species may not be kept in the Kasilov River personal use salmon fishery. Any king salmon, dolly varden, or rainbow trout caught while dip netting must be released immediately unharmed in the water. Not only will the increased area allow dip netters a greater chance to harvest their household limits, but it gives people more room to spread out and take advantage of another good run of sockeye on the Kasilov. Whew. So guys, those sockeye numbers are bumping. They are bumping. Um, and so just to give you guys a little bit on the ground, I was actually um, flossing for sockeye on the Kenai River and heck yeah, I caught one. And it was my first salmon I've caught actually here in Alaska. I'm so happy. I just ate the whole thing. It was delicious. I was eating it raw uh, on the river there. It was awesome. 
uh, they're like candy, that bright red color. You guys got to get, you guys got to get to the river. You got to catch some sockeye. It's just, it's insane. There's fish jumping out of the water. It's amazing. Um, all right. So let's, let's change gears here. Let's look at the Chinook run, the early run for June. Let's, let's take a look. We got the final counts here. Kenai Chinook estimates. So for 2021 cumulative count 4,131. Now that's last year. There's only 2,444 fish that came in 2019, 4,186. So, 3,000 in 2018. So it's the third best year of the last five years. It's okay. Um, I'm happy to see the fishery seems to be stabilizing, increasing. It's, it, it's, it's looking okay. They shut it down for a reason, but uh, don't worry, guys. One of these years, we're going to have a big run again. And uh, I believe in the cyclical, um, the cyclical numbers here. The optimal escapement goal was between 3,900 and 6,600. So we just squeaked by the minimums. Um, and so, well, that's good news. So we'll, we'll have a lot more um, Chinook. Now for the late run, which starts here in July, our escapement goals are between 15,000 and 30,000. So let's take a look at those numbers right now. So far, 116, well, 369 fish have come through. Um, you know, that, that big year, five years ago, there was double that 609, 399. So, okay. We're on pace for another average year with the Kings. We'll see if they reopen that in July. I don't think they will just looking at these numbers, unless there's a massive spike here in the next week. But if you got your heart set on a King salmon, don't fish the Kenai. You're going to have to go to the Nanilchik here. Take a look at these numbers. These are still high. 12 wild, 27 hatchery came through July 3rd. 2,041 fish have come in so far this year. So the Nilchik hatchery is producing. You can get down there. You can keep the hatchery only. Uh, and, of course, you can always go to the the Kasilov River and go for kings. And the nice thing about the Kasilov is that you're flossing for Osaka. You might get yourself a king just by happenstance because it is a smaller river, and they run almost in the same water column as the, the Sakai. So, you know, I think the Kasilov is probably your best bet for King Sam if you got your heart set on those. Uh, but of course, July 1st is also when the Kenai start to count late run sockeye. And I was just down there and I caught one. So I can tell you, man, those fish are there. Um, so far, we've had 19,530 fish come through. That's better than last year, which is only 12,000. You know, two years ago, there's 20,000. Five years ago, there's only 11,000. So this is on right now. We're on par to the second best run in the last five years. Um, and I think we're going to see those numbers jump up dramatically. It was a really hot day on July 4th. And I've noticed when the days get hot, those fish come running into the river. Um, and by the way, if you guys don't know, the best way to fish for sockeye is to find yourself a spot of the river, find a place where the water kind of slows down, and those fish are going to go to that slow water to rest before running upstream. And then you can be out there flossing all day, but I would say wait until you see those fish start jumping. And when those fish start jumping, you know there's a school coming. And that's when you get out there. That's when you start flossing. That's when you try to get your hook into their mouth. Uh, and so if you want any tips from me, I would say hang out by the river till you see those fish jumping and then get out there and, and go pull them in. And trust me, you guys are going to get it. Uh, let's take a look at the Russian River Sockeye early run for 2021. Uh, take a look at those counts. They just increased those limits. 35,000 so far have come through. It's the second best year in the last five years, eh, third best year, but it's good. That's why they increased the limit to six because we got a lot of sockeye coming in. So if you guys want to hit the Russian river, go now. Now the thing about the Russian river, those fish tend to be a little bit redder. The meat's not as fresh as if you get them lower in the Kenai. The nice part about the Russian though, is that it's a narrower body of water. So you can get them in the mouth a little bit easier. Uh, than you can in the lower Kenai. But like I was saying, you can catch them there. And it sounds like the Kasilov's getting off the charts. I might go there tomorrow and see what, what's going on because those numbers are absolutely astronomical. So I got to check that out. Yeah, let's take a look here. Look at that. That is a, the biggest spike we've had in the last five years this early on 20,000 fish. Holy crap. Oh, man. Let's take a look at this. Let's see. The biggest day was 12,000, no, 20,000 fish, June 30th, 20,000 fish came through on June 30th. Holy cow. Talk about sockeye. So far this year, we've had 131,000 sockeye. That's the best run in the last five years by a long shot. So the Kasilov is pumping fish out. I got to get down there. I'm, 
I'm getting goosebumps reading these numbers. I, you know, I haven't had good luck fishing the Kisilov. I've been fishing it all summer, and I, and I kind of just gave up on it over the last week. And looking at these numbers, maybe I shouldn't have given up on it. So I'm going to give it another look this week. Uh, I will let you guys know I did some fishing inland. I went to some inland lakes here uh, in the northern part of the peninsula. There's beautiful canoe routes and stuff. And, and I actually got myself a nice rainbow trout up there. Uh, and the fishing's good. If you guys want to hit up the lakes for, for Dolly Varden, Arctic char, rainbow trout, by all means, go for it. It's a good time of year to do it. But uh, looking at these fish counts, I don't think you'll see me inland. You're going to see me on these rivers as just catching sockeye, especially with these increased limits. Are you kidding me? Sockeye, 10, 15 pounds. These are big fish. I got to get out there. Maybe I hook a king in the casilla. Remember, no live bait down there. Um, and I'm just getting super excited because the run's coming in. July's here. And I know all the tourists are about to be here, but there's a lot of fish here, people. So get on down here. Catch yourself some salmon. If you like that video, share, like, subscribe. I do this every week. And I want to make sure you have the best fishing trip possible. All right. Talk to you guys next time.